Alright guys, a quick and dirty one here. I got a uh, a deck coming from one of my subscribers called Radu. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. And uh, this is the complaint is that he's done the belts and the service, and he is having a trouble with the eject button. It's not ejecting electronically. So let's get into this. I'm hoping it's going to be something simple. Otherwise, I'll have to realign the transport. But uh, he's included the uh, the door there because he can't fit it because it won't eject. So upon turning on the deck then, um, everything seems to power up fine, but there's no response to the eject button. So we're, first of all, we're probably going to have a look at make sure that the, the transport motor is working for the eject mechanism in there. And then we're going to have to have a look at the button and see what we need to do. So the capstan's running, so the, the play motor's working, but there is a separate motor for the eject. So if we undo these... Uh, plugs off the top we should hopefully just have a double check make sure all the pins are good and that they're seated properly because this is our main connectors to the transport from the motherboard all the pins are good so that's one thing so what i want to try and do now is manually try and turn the uh, the cog that controls the jet mechanism with my finger and see if that makes any kind of difference it's not the plugs, that's done nothing. So we'll uh, go through my fault finding here today and see what's happening. So these are the wires from the actual eject button board. There is another small one which I'll pull out in a minute. And the ribbon cable is for the display. These all seem pretty good. I don't think he's had this off. So I'm not sure I suspect this, but um, we could have an issue with the button. Calibration and monitor buttons uh, obviously aren't doing anything and it's just double checking these are disconnected properly looks pretty clean if you have a look at the ribbon cable there I don't think there's been any damage to that when uh, possibly it's been pulled out in the past but we're just on a really basic visual check at the moment and most of the time I find that cassette decks you can see something pretty simply just for a good look at the start. There's no need to pull out the test equipment just yet. So visually going through the pieces that are associated with the problem sometimes picks up what's going on with it. Dolby switch is working again. Now as you can see, the, the, the cog down there behind the capstan is what turns the eject mechanism. So if I turn this by hand, as I'm doing this, I don't know if you can hear it, but the motor does actually kick in. And what that is, is that's the transport trying to reset itself as I put it in an incorrect position almost. Which is a good sign, which means that potentially it's not the motor or the transport side of things that is the issue. So what I'm doing is just winding that back a little bit. Hopefully the rotary encoder will pick up this kind of error uh, of positioning of the transport and try and correct it. And it does, it does try and correct it. So with the transport out, I just want to visually check this white arm. Sometimes it's difficult when you put it back together, this goes out of place, but that's good. It's on the brown selector cog there. And I have manually pushed this cog. You can just see through the gap there. I've manually turned that, which has allowed the mechanism to mechanically open. So that lock on the left has opened it. So it's not a problem with the door. The rest of the transport looks good. Uh, he's done this himself and everything seems fine. So... I've tried everything I can with the actual transport itself, bar taking it apart. It looks like it's all aligned. And what's happened there is, because I've reset it in an open position, the transport has noticed that and shut it straight away, which indicates to me that it's not a transport fault. So this is a contact for the eject button. And I've traced all this up to this three pin plug here, which is the smallest wire. And there was a broken connector inside this plug. It wasn't seated correctly. So now it's seated correctly, if I uh, check it, plugged it in, and lo and behold, we have a working door. So the issue is with the connector, possibly it's been pulled out and put back in skew with, but now that it's traced and pretty straightforward to fix, we can get on with some calibration and do a little bit of testing. And the transport works as expected. Levels are good, fast forward rewind, mechanically seems fine. 
The biggest test I find for these decks, which tests playback, recording, monitor, everything all in one go, is uh, the calibration test. So in order, in order to do that, I set Dolby to off, recording level all the way up, and it'll test the high and low tone, listen to it, and it'll tell you what the crack is with it on the display there. As I've done this, I've just noticed that the, uh, the Dolby switch, as I've put it back on, is the wrong way around. So this is calibrating itself, and I'm going to turn up the levels on the right hand side and hopefully we can get it to calibrate now this is also affected by the azimuth and the speed of the cassette so if those are off then you might find that it's difficult to calibrate but it's pretty much there it's a, it's a minor adjustment if anything swap these back over that's my uh, my error that i've recorded and not edited out you know we all make mistakes blindly pop those back on so I'm pretty convinced that we're about there, aside from some calibration now, I think that this will uh, play back record fine, and we'll go through the service manual and look for the, the levels, playback and azimuth. But as we stand now, it's pretty close. The bias is quite far off, but we'll get to that. Speed had to be adjusted, it should be 6.3k, it was at 5.9, so we sped it up. My cat has just come back from the vets and he's not happy. So he's just chilling with me while I do this. So now we're on the oscilloscope, we can check out the azimuth. And this is our azimuth tape playing at 6.3k. And after some adjusting, the azimuth is the best it's possibly going to get. That is a little bit of wobble on there. We are at 6.3k, it's quite a high tone. The wobble I will put down to, you know, the quality of the tape, pinch rollers, transport, things like that, tolerances. But that is as fine, as good as we're going to get it. And now the bias is a lot better when we're using the uh, auto calibration feature it's about where we sh where it should be because the high tones are more correct than they were before and now once we've done all the levels from the uh, service manual what i like to do is import a tone through the my signal generator that i have on the back and then compare it to what's been recorded on the tape through the monitor function and that's 3000 hertz going in and out and as I flick it backwards and forwards, you'll notice it changes. So now we do 8,000 hertz, which is actually higher than the service manual wants. 8,000 hertz, really good. So what I'll do next is I'll change that up to 12,000 hertz, which is actually at the limit of human hearing, and is way beyond what the service manual wants. Now at this stage, you will get a little bit of difference between the channels, because you're right at the edge of what the deck can actually do. But there's 12,000 hertz going in, and as we select between that and the tape, the distortion is expected. It's the Type 1 tape. Uh, Dolby is off. And I think 12,000 hertz, the, uh, the response for that is pretty darn good for the, for the age of the tape deck. Do another test at 3,000 hertz. And we are good. Happy with that. Therein lies the, the beauty of proper calibration. So now what I'll do is once I'm happy with all that, the ears are the best thing to use to, to check that you're happy with it. So I'll play some royalty free music for YouTube studio just so you can listen to it. And then while it's recording, I like to flick backwards and forwards between the monitor and the source, just to make sure that, you know, an oscilloscope can tell you the, uh, the digital properties of a deck, but there's nothing better than your ears. Everything is as close as it can ever get on that oscilloscope. And then as we flick between the tape monitor, which is, that's the tape there, and the source, we can compare the two. Levels on these do tend to jump about a little bit between flicking between tape and source. Uh, sometimes they'll jump up or back down, but I find that that's maybe an electronic interference from the button. Physically, it's fine. So another deck goes back to my friend Radu. If you have a deck that needs fixing, let me know. Otherwise, watch the videos, give it a go. Good luck. Have a good day, guys.